hope the meeting is being live streamed. Okay, got it. All right. I'll go inside the group simultaneously just to make sure. Um, yep, 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 yep. Let's make sure. Let's refresh. Yep, and we are live. Oh boy. So, <laughs> apologies for the delay. Obviously, that's tech for you. Um, obviously we, 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 we're going to do it. We were going to do it a different way. That's obviously not worked. Um, so obviously that's why it's taken an extra 11 minutes to get it sorted. So obviously I'd like to welcome, uh, Ramona to, to the chat. Obviously her name is not iPad. That's obviously the <laughs> device that she's, she's joining on. Uh, Ramona was a client of mine back in from, the beginnings of 2020 to I think about mid 2021, if I remember rightly. Something like that. Yeah, I was in the pandemic era. So obviously on on this live, and I'm going to open my phone so people can actually ask questions, uh, so I don't miss them. So if, if you are watching live, do come on, come say hello, and don't be hiding. Um, I will do it via my phone. So if you have any questions to Ramona, if you have any questions to me, obviously put them in the chat. So I'll put that there so I can see it. So 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 people got an idea what this this call or tr I'm not gonna call it a call, but obviously it's a call for me. Uh for this live training, obviously we're gonna do a client demo with uh Ramona. I must call you something else there, so I apologize. <laughs> That was really a, what a different name. We're going to talk through some of the the objections you had prior to coming to work with me, some of the things that you you faced before working with me, and obviously that gives some people some. Let me put that on mute. Uh, some context. So if they they they're thinking of potentially working with me in some capacity, or they're still sat on the fence, you can give them a non biased. Uh, a description or an overview of the program. So if we start from the very, very beginning, so we go back to 2020, I know it's a long, seems like a long time ago, but what were some of the things that you were struggling with personally? Uh, <clears throat> personally, it was just, um, well, I would join a gym, but the equipment in the gym was rarely made for two people with two legs. And it was like, couldn't get a good workout and it just made you depressed because you weren't you had to have a trainer with you and it was just you could only use like five different machines where I'm from anyways it wasn't like it wasn't handicap accessible it wasn't made for amputees and people just did not know how to deal with someone with no leg you know and they didn't know what kind of exercises or anything so therefore you know it was very limited so that caused me to be depressed because you know it's I'm gaining weight sitting in a wheelchair not being able to use my prosthetic um so I you know I just started researching online and I met James and started talking to him I mean it took me like a half a year in order to send him a longer message than that. it's longer than that you told me it was two years was, of watching so, yeah I would kept, yeah I kept going back to the his website and checking out his stuff and it was just like, mm, uh, uh, uh. so I finally did it. And he responded and we had long conversations about my situation and whatnot. And uh, uh, he had a lot of um, encouraging words. Uh, he had a good plan in place as far as what I need done, what I need to do, my mindset. And uh, so I joined and um, it was a great experience. So talk to the guys and girls about why you took two years, because this is this is quite quite a, for me now four years later quite a funny story. I don't. Mean, Do you remember? I was, I, I was just afraid to. I mean. No, but you said to me when uh, in the beginning of coming to work to me, you said my Facebook lives weren't real. Remember that? Right. Right. So wh why why did you not believe them to be authentic? 
I just, I just was, I guess I wasn't used to all that technology and all that other stuff. And I, I just was, I was just hesitant because it's just like, this is too good to be true. It's just a scam. I thought it was like, a, you know, uh, he's just doing it for, I just thought it like it was like info commercial or something like that. I didn't think it was real because I guess it was too good to be true. It wasn't. You just didn't see that, you know, it, I don't know. It was just weird for me to believe that it was, you know, an actual thing. Because yeah, I've never seen it before. You know, I've seen, I mean, I've seen um, Facebook, you know, people that are amputees and, you know, they're promoting their thing, but I've never seen someone actual, someone that actually cared about helping another amputee get healthier so do you do you think sense? do you think that comes back to your military background to some extent to be a little bit i don't want to use the word wary but a little bit more cautious cautious and, and skeptical to to have all the facts before you obviously pull the trigger yes 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 and whenever you called me or we texted i was just like okay this is real. So we went from there and what you had to offer was great. And I, I, it all just boils down to your mindset. You have to have be in the right state of mind in order to do the program because you're not going to continue with the program. Unfortunately, I couldn't continue with the program because I had a death in my family and that took a lot of my time. And, you know, my mind wasn't in what I needed to do for myself. So it was everywhere else, so. And that was uh, unfortunate for me, so. Well, I think obviously everybody can appreciate that. I, I sure have empathy towards that because losing somebody that's, well, I, I, I can obviously, if you don't mind me sharing, obviously you lost your father. Right. I think losing one of your parents, I don't think anybody's ever ready for that anyway, so that I had the, the the empathy to kind of go, okay, you focus on that. Right. And if you feel the time's right to come back, obviously that decision is with you, whether or not you do or you don't, ultimately right. it rests with you. So for people watching, don't don't be apprehensive. I won't come chasing after you if you decide to, to obviously to stop, to quit, down to, you know, a death in the family, financial circumstances hey that happens i'm not going to be like a debt collector and coming after you because no you you, you you owe money but james terms... is very compassionate and understanding when it comes to stuff like that so he was very uh compassionate towards my situation so and you know his words all his podcasts and facebook's and things that he put out there. I mean, and that's a lot of information for a lot of people. I don't, I can't do well with a lot of information, but there are, you know, things that he said were keywords, you know, especially going through my grieving process and thinking about myself and just certain things that he used to say, you know, they stayed in my mind. And, and it's just like, his, his words are important, even though it's a lot of information and people get sidetracked when they listen to him, but there are a lot of, important words that he says and a lot of things that he he makes a lot of sense it's a lot of it's scientific and a lot of people don't understand all of it but it's yeah well you, I'm, you, I'm very you, grateful that james has come into my life you brought up a good one this morning um because of what's your morning obviously it's my afternoon because uh, obviously i touched base to make sure you could make it this afternoon and right. make, the, make the call today and you obviously said due to obviously health conditions you were saying obviously something that i've i don't want to use the words preach but that's pretty much what it is of you know you can't control the things that are out of your control and the longer that you're inside this group the more you're going to hear that it's almost like me beating that drum right it, it is obviously something that ramona's here for obviously long over a year colin's another client who Obviously, we'll start using that vernacular and using some of the terminology that that I that I use is because 
you get you've got to a point where you know what you can control and obviously the stuff that most people deem that they want would like to control you've kind of gone well okay i can't control that even though i would like to but that's okay and obviously that's something my even myself as 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 a coach or the, the somebody in the leadership role will i will remind myself to do that from time to time in terms of i can only control what i can control and the less that i put an importance on the non-controllables the better you're going to feel emotionally because you're able to obviously grasp on things that obviously you can move the needle if i put it in a simple terms thus you're not unhappy you're not depressed you're not overwhelmed because right. of the things are the tangibles that you're able to to have a to intimate impact on i'm not gonna say straight away but day to day that Obviously, if you choose to do something about it, you move the needle more in a forward progression, obviously, as opposed to the alternative, which I think a, lamp, a fair few amputees will do. Uh, we'll, we'll focus on the uncontrollables, the untangibles, and it obviously does overwhelm you because you can't have any bearing on the outcome if I put it in simple terms, because it is something that is either another another person that's responsible for the overall uh, doing of it. If I use the prosthetic, it's probably the easiest way of doing it. If, if you break it, you need to go see the prosthetist or, right. or the technician and they do the rest. You can't, or you're not supposed to. I'll put it there. I won't, I won't, I won't, I won't, judge, I won't judge, because obviously there are amputees that do fix their own legs and some aspects of it. But you have no control over of that because if it breaks, you can't right. predict when that's going to happen. So that's completely out of your control when it comes to that that aspect of it. But you mentioned weight loss, um, Ramona. Tell everybody watching how much you were looking to lose. Um, I was looking to lose probably 70 pounds. But, you know, I'm my own, I'm my own worst enemy when it comes to losing weight because I don't eat enough calories. So my fat is stored. Um, you know, it's not like I don't exercise because I exercise. I might not work in the gym, but I work out in my yard. I lift logs. I lift cement. I cut my grass, but it's all upper body. I don't do a lot for my lower body, but wear my prosthetic and get exercise that way. But I have a prosthetic that doesn't work. So I can only wear it limit, you know, I can only wear it a certain amount of time, but you know, I still struggle with losing weight. You know, I've tried every program known to me and I know I have to have more protein, but I don't eat a lot of red meat. And it's just, it's a mindset. Another thing James wants people to know, you have to have that mindset. If you don't have the right mindset, you're not going to do anything. Well, I probably could go even deeper than that because it's come up a lot. Uh, lately of people I won't name people because obviously that's not fair uh, there's p people and I, there's a few people watching that um, know I, I, that obviously I'm, I'm going to describe them they're describing exactly what you're talking about of uh, under eating missing meals etc but you say mindset I will put it down to stress yeah I you know I, you know, I just I mean we talk about like you said you can only control things that you can control I just had Surge, cancer surgery on my throat so i don't have an appetite i'm afraid to eat because it gets caught and everything you know there's there are other lying examples why I'm not eating why the way i should but you know it's still you know i i'm making excuses i mean that's that you we can make a million excuses why we don't do something it's just like but you really have to do something i mean i noticed as i'm getting older more things are breaking down in my body because i'm not using them so it's just I mean, I don't know. I and mean, if I had two legs, I would be going 90 to nothing, but I sit a lot in my wheelchair. So it's just, you know, it's a lot of amputees are like that. You know, they get depressed and they get, you know, oh, I don't care type of thing, but you got to find a balance that works for you. So 
and I live alone. You know, I have, I take care of my dogs and it's me. So it's hard when you live alone, you know, because you're only responsible for yourself. So. Well, I think maybe you're not giving yourself a fair deal there, Ramona. No. You had the stress of obviously losing your father. Um, you had a, if you don't mind me sharing this, the, the toxic relationship with your sister. Yeah. That's a lot of stress. A lot of things change, you know. You know, I yeah, I made the choice to tell my sister to leave, so that kind of helped. You know, my front room now where she used to live, I have my equipment that I can use, you know, I've got my rowing machine and stuff like that, you know. I mean, you can't, people like think they have to do everything all at once. You don't have to do everything at once. If you take baby steps towards that goal that you want to achieve, then you'll succeed. It's just like, you know, like dieting, you know, if you make it a small amount of change, you know, like you said to me, you know, just incorporate this into your diet or incorporate that into your diet. You know, it, it doesn't ha happen all at once. It just takes time. And I think we just get caught up. Everything's rush, 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 rush. Mm -hmm. and it, I'm, tr you know. I'm trying to undo some of the, what, what Ramon has explained that I'm trying to undo some of the, the subconscious behaviors that even i exhibit to a certain extent of we live in a world that is what did i coin it i stole it obviously amazon express to a certain extent of we're in a mindset that pretty much depending on where you live in the world you could get a package probably tonight if in, in the u.s in some places right. whereas that doesn't work in, in in a world when it comes to health and fitness because obviously uh, if I use your example of seventy pounds, you've not put seventy pound on overnight. No. Despite what you think, it's not happened all at once, and it's not. No. It, it's crept up on you slowly, and yep. obviously, it's going to take that, that amount of time. Potentially, off. potentially, if we're, we're talking about years, if not maybe longer, to undo that. Yeah those are behaviors and habits that you've got and it's taking a you could say cautious approach of doing little by little some people that can can do the all-in approach of going head first uh into things and and i, and I did a video of that i mean being an athlete week. that's what i could i thought i could do is like i could approach it just like that and i could get the weight off because i used to do that in college you know when i came home for the summer i would i would train and train and train and i would lose the weight but, you know, I was at my ideal weight when I, my, my knee got sepsis, sepsis in it. And then slowly the weight kept creeping up, creeping up, creeping up. You know, the stress of everything kept creeping up. So, you know, I know where the weight came from. Not eating properly, not sleeping right, being in chronic pain. I mean, everybody that's an amputee knows that, you know, we're in chronic pain. We have bad days. We just can't even move. You know, it's just, it's craziness. So. And being depressed about it, that doesn't help anybody. So it's just, there's so many variables, you know. Well, it's trying to keep yourself out of a scarcity mindset. And obviously I'm going to elaborate what, what I mean by scarcity mindset. Yeah. Because that's yeah. quite, um, oh, I'll use your scientific term. It's quite a, a difficult term to understand, but it's, if if I were to use it more in, in layman's terms of, if you've got anxiety, depression, you think quite negatively and it's quite easy to take the other approach of, oh, it's not working, what's the point? Mentality. Because things are kind of, to a certain extent, could sm sto snowball out of control and obviously the, the outcome of that is catastrophizing. Uh, worst case scenario. Um, most people obviously won't get to that point. But, by doing that, you're doing yourself a disservice because you're undoing some of the the good that you might not perceive. It obviously takes another person to kind of go in, okay, well done on losing a pound, two pound, five pound. Mm -hmm. Because obviously I can see the bigger picture because it's not me. And right. By having obviously that accountability to another, it doesn't even have to be a coach. It could be, 
if if you've got a support network that is strong enough, which obviously you you didn't have to a certain extent because your sister would do the opposite, but if you've got a spouse, children that can keep you accountable, to kind of go, come on, mom, come on, dad, you, you you're making progress, don't give up. It's a mindset that we lose because we had that as children, toddlers, infants, because parents and you know close friends would say, "Ah, oh, if you fall down, come on, James, get up." Yep. Yep. Whereas as adults, we don't have that very much because the world wants you. It's quite malicious in some ways. People get great satisfaction out of other people's misery because it's like, ah. Oh, Ah, oh, James, you failed. I thought I, I told you you would, because they don't see that they could do it. So for right. you to step out outside of uh, your comfort zone, for them that's that's unsurmountable, and it's like, oh, no, I won't do that because mm, what happens? This that like, this was to happen. Say, if I use it in an analogy of, of working, if I step outside of a nine to five. Most people were saying, why are you doing that? Why are you taking out of safety to go and do something that is not safe in terms of self-employment? It's not guaranteeing income. I've got to work hard every single day, whereas I could obviously take a paycheck. That's not... that obviously doesn't sit with my morals and my ethics. That's me. But I'm not I'm not preaching to people say, I'll oh, go self-employment and you'll be happier. But be it I have control over pretty much everything that I do because I'm the boss and I'm the employee but where I'm coming back to the initial point of having those kind of negative words is if you haven't got the foundations or you're not in an environment that is conducive that or is the, the environment that you're in at the moment is counterproductive you're doing it you're doing yourself a disservice because any small win that you have and i used to do this you gloss over it and say oh it's no big deal it's luck right. it's a fluke but if you don't go i don't know i don't expect anybody to do this to start jumping on the table and, and dancing you need to celebrate those small things because the 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 monumental milestones in the long road that is the process of getting to the result because there's no point getting to the end of it losing 70 pounds and this is conversations i've had in the past the people wouldn't be happy when they got they if they didn't get the result sorry but i reminded them that obviously this is something that i'll do to everybody if, if, if they're willing to i'm not saying come and speak to me live but come to speak to me behind the scenes is i will I will put into perspective what you deem as happiness when it comes to result. That's good because obviously you've got to improve self-esteem, self self confidence because you've got a result and you don't care what people think about you in the street. However, with this individual, they had a loving family. So you can kind of see those don't align of if you don't get a result, you're unhappy, but you've got happiness in the environment that you've got so it's 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 playing out those things to progress and that's obviously what coaching is it is to challenge people's beliefs as ultimately these these, these are things that we've created over time of the beliefs i have now versus maybe the beliefs i have at the beginning of the pandemic have probably shifted because right. i've been willing to challenge my perspective on things i'm willing to be listen to other people as ah oh, that's a different perspective oh i like that better than my own and you can see there's an idea there's a shift because now right. i've i'm i'm going instead of going in that direction i'm going in that direction uh, so i'll give people a few few uh shout outs um it's weird watching myself on camera <laughs> it's another device <laughs> as well so uh, no it's just one screen and that's about it so Jeanette thanks for joining Clarence obviously Clarence you, you know each other quite well Cindy uh, six other people watching Debbie Paris thanks for joining Nina Evans and Sarah Keith, Keith 
key. Are there any questions? Keywords. Not yet. Okay. So we'll continue then. Um, what were some of your 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 daily daily frustrations then before you you came to uh, venturing over that white picket fence and and joining me? Um. I guess not having the stamina, stamina to use my prosthetic and just um, not having, I mean, I was in a gym, but I just couldn't do anything. So I was frustrated. I didn't know what kind of exercises I could do or what exercises could benefit me. And normal people with two legs couldn't tell me the exercises that would benefit me the most. Yeah, I went to physical therapy when I lost my leg, but that was just... Um, exercises to gear and learning how to walk and stuff like that but I think that's the most most frustrating um part of it I mean to learn how to do the right kind of exercises or what's going to benefit your hips more your upper body um you know keeping that strength because your strength I think shifts to your upper body more when you have a prosthetic because you have to use a wheelchair you have to use your upper body to get around if you you know you know even when you're not using your leg so it's just finding what the right combination of exercises is I think I don't you know it was really frustrating for me because I try something and it wouldn't work or I get discouraged and I wouldn't do it again especially if I was at the gym I'd be on the bicycle and my leg would go flying off or you know and it's just I shouldn't laugh on that bit. It's very that discouraging. Quite, that is quite funny, the, the, the leg flying off the bike. But you mentioned there, Ramona, how much were you paying then for to, to go to the gym then on a monthly basis? Oh, my basis? gosh. It was like, uh, well, I got a military discount, so that helped a little bit. But probably about 500 plus a month for the gym. You know, and I would only go like three days a week maybe a half hour at a time, hour at a time, depending. But, you know, I had to get out. I had to walk in with my prosthetic and or, or my wheelchair. I always brought my wheelchair because more times than not, my leg would always fall off because I'd sweat. And when when your stump sweats and then things fall off and, and I never, my stump is uh, not a normal stump. I, I have a difficulty with it staying on because the way it's been cut off or whatever, so. So it was, it was very frustrating. So I worked better with not having my leg on. So I just did a one leg workout and, you know, even if I did the treadmill, uh, you know, walking on the, it, it just couldn't do hardly anything. The leg would pop off, the leg would pop off. So. Do you, do you feel a little bit, I'm not going to try, and, I don't want to put words into your mouth now. Do you feel a little bit hard done by because five hundred dollars a month to a gym and them not come up with any sort of solution yeah. is a lot of money and i think most people would agree yeah and Do you know put, the agree in the comments that's a lot of money because some some amputees are talking about mm -hmm. uh, i was talking to one yesterday thirty dollars a month ten dollars a month so it's in comparison it's it's substantial lot of, uh, it, it amount was expensive. of money yeah it's expensive you know and again but you are the one in charge of going to the gym you know if you didn't go to the gym it wasn't they didn't lose any money because they already got your money so but you know it's just it was very frustrating very discouraging and then the trainer that i had i had to pay extra for the trainer i had to have some a trainer with me you know because some of the equipment i had to have help on so i didn't fall off so they had to be there to you know because it wasn't set up to just like using a rowing machine, it's down low. And when you don't have your leg on, you have to balance. You have to lock your wheelchair. You have to get your leg over it. And you got to put your one foot into the the pedal, you know, on this little bench, I mean, seat that goes back and forth. So, and I'm short. So, you know, I've fallen off of it and I've landed right in the middle of it. And it was not fun. So, yeah. So there's all these obstacles that two-legged people don't even think about, you know. And trying to, when you're doing the bicycle, you know, you got the one leg on and they have to figure out how to take your foot to the pedal because normally if you have two legs, you get that momentum. But with one leg, you can't get the bicycle around without, you have to, foot has to be like taped in there or something so you could put it around with the one leg. So 
you know, there's, there's just so many things that they don't know about, but you know, it's a learning process. It's always a learning process, you know. Let us know in the comments if you can relate to that. Let put in the comments relate. Um, be it to to expenses, do it to obviously. I I've obviously done videos to do with the rowing machine, so I know exactly what you're talking about. With that, do you feel that you've kind of been let down a little bit? Because we're talking probably yes. closing into the. I'm fortunate. I know how much a personal trainer costs. So, in person, do you, do you think you were? I'm not gonna say taking advantage of, but do you think it was? They didn't do enough to answer your questions for five hundred dollars, let alone you paying yeah, yeah. closer to the thousand. They did not know how to handle a, a, a an amputee. They weren't. I mean, it's not their fault. It it's is. just like they weren't it educated. Is. I mean, it it's is. not it's education. So, and how you get education is you ask questions. So that's why, um, be it this applies yes. to everybody watching as well. Right. Don't you be know, afraid to them, ask me questions. You know, I asked them to get a a specific bicycle, the new step that it has the arm things and the leg things. They can do them, you know, together because they had that in rehab. Anybody that has gone through rehab they know it's called the new set machine you know i asked the, the owner if he could get one in there not just for me but for elderly people that can't you know do the stair mass or the elliptical or something like that it's like sitting elliptical you know mm -hmm. but they never got one you know it's just like but then they spend fifty thousand dollars and get all this other equipment for the younger crowd of, to get people in there they weren't looking at the needs of the person so So, you know, you know, so, so now do I spend $5,000 and get my own, you know, it's like, but I know when I worked out with you, that was probably the best workouts I had because you were watching me do my dumbbells. You were watching me do my arm lifts and, you know, my leg lifts and you were correcting me as I was doing the exercises. So it was, you know, in that regard, that's, only someone that's an amputee or someone that has a limb loss or not, you know, can understand that and know how to, how to correct it. And that's all I can say. It's just, uh, it's, it's crazy. So. Well, it's probably, it's my, I said vendetta. That's not, that's not, that's definitely not the right word. I mean, it's wonderful. But that's my, that's my <laughs> ultimate goal is to obviously educate people because it's it, it, it right. is it's a bugbear of mine and I, I laugh about it. But I'm obviously being serious in terms of I don't want to be having these conversations in terms of you, you being let down, of Ramona being let down, for people watching being let down. It irritates me, and obviously the the other trainers like myself who've, who've got him disabilities it's probably frustration because it's like well we obviously know how to do things and are probably maybe into don't do it we probably don't help the fact and and if i compound that and put the paralympians in there as well we don't help the fact for the general populace because we're able to do it because we've obviously been we've had access to probably things outside of your realms of, 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 of being able to have access to so, so our knowledge is probably a lot is a lot stronger but then obviously right. that doesn't help when we go back into the the general populace because people are like well he knows what he's doing so right. I'm going to assume in every I'm going to blanket that and say every amputee will not want to have help we're getting into murky waters now in terms of like help and things like that because of our own um, issues around that of not wanting to be I'll use myself because I it's, it's a fact of this is a story that happened last year uh, we were meant to do an exercise and I was on a a weekend a weekend away with as a retreat with other personal trainers who were able-bodied and obviously the person in charge said oh well 
because we're going to do an exercise in the sea. This is obviously almost like he's uh, ex RAF, so military. So, <laughs> so he's got an obsession with cold water. So, almost like you think of Navy SEALs, it was almost like that, uh, but just not lying down, but had to go in the, in the sea. And for me to obviously take part, he said, Oh, do you mind that the, the, the other guys carry you in? You know what my answer is for that. <laughs> like, hell, hell no. But me being on the beach by myself and watching, I felt really, 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 not angry with myself, but a little bit, I'm missing out here because of my own um, ego. Because I don't want, obviously if I'd have flipped it on his head and said, well, if you get anybody else to be carried around, they would have said no as well. Because it's, it's, more so as a male it's very demasculating but for every amputee it'd be the same as no I can do it because I need to prove to you all I'm more than capable of doing it but we fast forward to seven months ago Didn't it wasn't in a sea it was in a um, oh, what did they have converted it's a, um, one of the feeders for the cows and he'd obviously right. converted to that as an ice bath. And some people have seen this on my on my Facebook, and some might have not done. Obviously, if you haven't seen it and you want to see it, obviously I'll 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 find it and fish it out for you. It's a it's a good bit of humour for you uh, of my my torture. But I wasn't going to miss out to do it twice because it's like I don't want to I don't want to be on the outside looking in. I so I chose to get over my my fears with the cold because this is obviously most people don't like the cold you live in the northeast so you probably got a, a tolerance a little bit more so than maybe somebody some of the guys in the south but i wanted to do that for myself because it was uh getting over a, a psychological hurdle as i put it i know what that is now it's, it's it was i wanted to get over some of them demons so Coming back to the original point, and you've known me long enough, so I've, I'll do this a lot. But with with kind of being let down, obviously that's one of my missions. Probably like a mission statement. As that's something I want to change. If we're going, we need to educate all the PTs that are coming in every single year. To hey, this is how you talk to an amputee. It's not that difficult. And if even if it has to be me sat sat in front of them to kind of go. Fire away your questions <laughs> and obviously be awkward as hell because I can. Um, to then obviously when they come to speak to people in the general public, they don't feel awkward. They don't feel, mm, I can't answer that question because it's, um, it's, it'd be on PC of me. Thus, they do you a disservice because ultimately if they're, not, they're too afraid to ask those difficult questions, your needs aren't met. Whereas you can attest to, obviously, I've got better at this over the years. I'm not afraid to, and people that have spoken to me know this, I'm not afraid to ask the NPC, NPC questions. I'm not afraid to get to the bottom of what the problem is, because if I get to the problem, the root cause of what it is, I can better coach you going right. forward. So it might be... <clears throat> okay, the group itself is to do around the fitness journey. If your goal is weight loss, that's service level. Okay, for some people that might be the be all and end all they want to get. And I happen to speak to an amputee who wanted to have a six pack. It's very rare for me to speak to somebody that wants that as a goal. But if that's your that's your goal, we have to look at what, what's going to be the, the stimulator or the motivator day in, day out. Because it's going to get a certain point where you know having washboard abs isn't going to be motivation enough so it, it's for me to obviously find that exact i'm going to call it a trigger inside your specific needs then i could push that button all the time as in okay you're 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 lacking willpower you're like this is all this is not my this is not my vernacular it's not my language I'm lacking in motivation. Okay, let's remind you of what you said to me was the reason why you wanted to do this in the first place. Be it 
the kids, the grandkids. And if that doesn't pull at your heartstrings, there's something wrong with you. Because if 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 you're telling me you want to be there so you can you can run around and play with your kids or run around with your grandkids and you can't do it at the moment, we seriously got a problem. Because if you're out of breath, tying your shoelaces, you're t- you, you're winded, bending over to do your shoelaces, there's a serious problem because you should be able to do that without any discomfort. So, obviously, from a you can see from a outside perspective, the bird's eye view is the weight loss. So, be it ten pounds, twenty pounds, thirty pounds. Some of the Americans is upwards of a hundred. We've got some work to do because that's a lot. Of, that's a lot of weight to shift. But you don't have to do it alone. Um, there are a few people who have come back to me who just had conversation with me, and it was the I've actually had ones actually said it, said it, but I said it first. The kick up the ass they needed, because it was okay. You you're not happy with where you are. You're apprehensive of taking that jump off the fence, which I I won't I won't disagree. That is hard, because you you're worried about that uncertainty of will I not will I not succeed again? Will it not work? Is this program the same? And I'm going to use obviously what you said, Ramona, in the beginning of is it a scam? Right. I'm so confident in my program working. If and I'm going to use your words because it's a testimony you said. Yeah, I think a couple of years ago of if you put in the work, this is Ramona's words, you will get the result. At right. the end of the day, I I keep you I keep you accountable. I can't do the work for you. Let me just but, relate to when you lost your limb. You know, all the work that you had to put in in order to walk again. I mean, you put the work in in order to walk again. It's the same principle. You got to do the work in order to see the results. I mean, it's, you know, it's pretty basic, but, you know, we all get sidetracked and we then we lose our focus. And there's just a lot of different things. Patience, patience, focus. Yeah. Rome wasn't built in a day. It takes time. Like you said, it's the small victories, you know, the, the one one pound a week weight loss or being able to walk 10 more feet. I mean, I've been forced myself walk walking up and down my driveway. I mean, because I got to get in shape. I have to walk my daughter down the aisle in, in November and I can't even walk 10 feet. You know, I'm trying to put the, I'm trying to put the work in, you know, or trying to figure out how I can get my body stronger, you know after having cancer this after having this major surgery so Mm -hmm. i'm still recovering you know i'm only six months out so you know it threw me for a loop so i'm trying to find ways to get stronger well i commend i commend and i don't care what i look like i don't care if people stare at me you know i don't look at myself as disabled i just look at myself hey i'm just trying to make my life better you know well i i i probably um reiterate that i said something else then what you just said in terms of if if that is a problem for you as well if, if you've got this judgment to some extent of people observing you uh on with one lady yesterday that mentioned obviously she wouldn't go to the gym because people are going to judge her based on weight disability and being in a chair that is something that we would work on because at the end of the day, obviously I used to think like that. I wasn't in a chair, but as a teenager, I used to think of, and this is, this is, I won't say horrified people when I've said it, but it's people have sat up and take notice because they're like, oh, man, that's some deep shit. It's hard. It's like, well, it's a, for me, it was a fact. It's, I wanted to be normal. As you put it, I want to be I want to be able bodied. I can't. I wouldn't change it for the world now. In terms of obviously, come total one hundred eighty degrees full circle. To I wouldn't change anything about me because it's it's made me who I am. And obviously, we 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 work at that with coaching in terms of looking at your. If I looked at like scientific, like psychological, you know, it's your identity, it's your beliefs. But 
if I make it in simple terms, it, it, this is who you are, this is how you think and operate. So if you, you have an aversion to going to the gym, and this is disability or not, this is, a, this is applied to able-bodied people as well, it's an intimidating environment. It's not very uh, accommodating. It's not very receptive of new people. It should be because everybody on that journey, even if they're in, say, because you did bodybuilding before your amputation, even if people are that that kind of top pillar of, of, of exercise, they started off somewhere potentially right. being down the bottom of being, they wanted to lose weight. And then as they progressed, oh, I want to do, get into obviously bodybuilding and women's change massively, but I want to go and compete to, to be able right. to see what I can bring to the thing. And then obviously it's addictive because it's competition. And obviously they get there. But what I'm trying to... Uh, alliterate on this is obviously if people are, were more accommodating to the new people coming in it would be less daunting because the 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 environment is uh familiar it's very very um empathetic of where you're coming from and it's it's an it's an arm round you versus oh come january Oh, the newbies are going to be a nuisance. Are going to be in the way. And come March, oh, good riddance. But that's not that's not ideal for new people because, hey, you might have the 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 the. I'm gonna I'm gonna say as this the audacity to train seven days a week and you've never trained in your life. That's if if you think about that rationally, that's barbaric, because mm. you can't sustain that long term. You might be able to do that couple of weeks i obviously wouldn't allow it because right. that's one of the things i probably would ask is, well how much experience have you got if it's if you're telling me i'm brand new and i've never done anything like well i won't let you train seven days a week because you're well, gonna, you're gonna you're and gonna... a good tr good coach and a good trainer would tell you that i mean i was blessed with a good trainer and then they because of the pandemic they let her go and i haven't been back to the gym since I mean, she knew what I was capable of, but she kept me, you know, on an even keel, you know, no, you're only doing this many, you know, how are you feeling today? She always asked that question. How are you feeling today? Anything or, you know, it, it's twofold, you know, you got to find a gym that will take you and you got to find a good trainer that's going to help you, you know? So, yeah, well, it's, I get it's, it. It's, 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 at the end of the day, it's a relationship. It's, it's that, that, that is, Obviously, Colin is still with me now at it, to, to now, and Colin's been with me. Yeah. What we're near in two years with yeah. him. So, those are questions I would ask people: How are you feeling? Or, right. He's he's that open now to ah, oh, this is what's wrong with me when it comes to my. I don't think he might be sharing it, diabetes or his liver or his, because he knows of oh, if he's not hundred percent. Hey. I need to know that because there's no point me putting you in the ground. Right. I don't mean this. I don't mean literally, but I mean run you run you ragged to the point that you're not able to turn up. Right. You'll adjust your program. In two days. I'll, right. I'll take. I'll take. And any good coach will do this. He'll take right, into right. account of. Um, I was chatting to one I had when I wo I worked in corporate for a little bit, and he 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 worked he works in mental mental health as a as a nurse, and he was giving himself a hard time. Mm -hmm. for, for not being able to do as well he'd done the previous week I kind of went and people might not assume this of me because of my background I was quite I was sympathetic it's like have you taken into account of your sleep have you taken into account your working day have you eaten to properly today these are things right. that I will take into account because you've you've you can't you can't expect your body to operate if you don't feed it in a way it's like a right. muscle car or a high is it you're a high performance engine and if you don't take into or if you're not if most people probably wouldn't be aware of that if you're not aware of these things you wouldn't think of them to be a, a big deal of sleep of right. eating of high i didn't obviously mention hydration these things are going to impact on 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 what you're able to do and obviously right. 
okay, I can joke about this. Yes, we are technically a quarter machine, half machine, three to three fourths of seventy five percent machines because of the prosthetic. Obviously, that's a joke aside. <laughs> us operating are not robots. They're not able to replicate even myself a high level sport there was rest incorporated that's probably why i take great pro- well not great great pride i take importance into rest and recovery because it's just important if not more so than the, the what you feed yourself what you tr- how you right. train because if you're not recovering and resting properly how do you expect your body to be able to operate back at 100% so right. be it obviously I mentioned Damon last week with a piece of tr- oh, it was one of the lives I did on my profile. He wasn't getting enough rest. I said, "Well, that's one of the reasons you're not able to do. You get through set one, set two, you get right. you gas in it because you're not giving yourself um, enough recovery. And obviously, it, it's trying to with by speaking to other amputees and filling in the gaps where you don't have the knowledge to kind of give you here, here you go." This is some of the stuff that's maybe hidden when it comes to training or nutrition. If you want it answered, obviously, don't be the apprehensive kid I used to be in school of, nah, somebody else will ask that question. Right. But if you want it answered, you might help 10 people, 100 people. I think there's about 500 people in this group. You're going to do right. somebody a favor because they are maybe a little bit tentative to do it. Obviously, I've said it to somebody that i front from the line now when I want something answered but that's taken time that's you don't that's the 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 little bit approach when it comes to mindset if you want to really progress it's really challenging yourself and there's going to be self-doubt there's going to be elements of hmm, have I made the right decision uh this is a training I'll do but I'll share it today I, I was watching uh, a podcast this this afternoon before we came on well before I come on Ramona is, and the book is called uh, so I don't get it wrong I wrote it down uh, it's called The Inner Game of Tennis it's nothing to do with tennis but it's all about mindset and he he, he didn't write it Jim Edwards but it's um, who's the guy by Timothy Timothy Galway is his name. I'll put it in the comments because it's spelled weird. And it, it talks about the I and myself. Um, obviously, there's a hip hop song of me, myself, and I as well. But in terms of the the I is the critical one. Oh, you could have you could have done this better. You could have the the self doubt versus the my myself is the self conscious. So this is probably something I'll do in the future because it just needs a video itself. Have I found that fascinating? It's like I was very, I was lit, I stood up and noticed and took notes because like mm, that's that's for me that's that's what I like the mindset because it's those are things you can't see, but those little baby steps make massive inroads versus your exercise. Obviously, we'd see oh, if I go and do a workout today or you did a workout, you feel a pump. You'd feel that you've done something. Nutrition, you make a change, you'll feel it, not necessarily right away, but within probably about a week or so. Whereas the mindset, you don't see it, so you're going, to, well, that's not working. Right. Of, it's the same when it comes to counseling and things like that. People are like, well, that's that that resource doesn't work because you're not let it giving it time to 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 work if if you're in a dark place obviously it's not easy because it's like well i want to get out of that place so i'll try anything and everything but it's having the consistency to stick with it and obviously you will see the the progress but it's coming back to those milestones to remind you of you making progress because those little wins and and you give yourself allowance to celebrate them are victories because it's like they're like stepping stones you're able to progress through that so we're coming to the end uh there's not been very many there's not been any questions so i apologize for that ramona but obviously if there is any questions to uh i don't think you would mind if somebody got in touch with you no no 
not at all. To to us behind the scenes, um, I think people are a little bit tentative. I, that I'll That's give. Okay. I'll, if you've got any question, questions to me, obviously, you can put them in the comments. You can put yeah. them um, directly to me. Or if you want to ask Ramona personally, obviously, she said she doesn't mind, obviously, no. answering them. So that's all from me. So, Ramona, thank you very much for your time today. I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed it and you've got to see because I made a joke if you hadn't seen the one on the profile I've been non-biased so I laughed at myself because I've been honest because it's, it's I can I can big up anything that I want but obviously I've I've got more of a bias because it's mine it's I, 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 I know it works but to give obviously people that have gone through it to give you some of the things that they face and, and obviously they're their perspective of it. I know I've talked a bit too much probably for today so I do apologize so once again Ramona from the group and from myself right, can I ask you a question yeah yeah fire a question away that's been bothering me before everybody I mean you were born with a limb loss and we have limb loss from a tragedy or whatever mm -hmm. after we've lived a life with two limbs mm -hmm. so is there a difference in our mental state from the way you think and from the way we think? That's always been a question. I mean, or is it all the same? I think it's complex. I mean, because you've I adapted. I think it's a very complex question, and you're not the only person that's asked that. And I, this is a debate I have with Colin all the time. In terms of from the mindset perspective, no, I mean, because you, you, you come from... you come from a military you come from a military indoctrination to a certain extent of they've put you through basic training to think the same way as everybody else to be able to respond in a certain way in a conflict. Right. I think for me because of well similar upbringing because of my well, my my father's retired uh, U.S. Air Force so like you are and my mother's uh, NATO civilian and I think because of not necessarily i don't say agreeing with the medical profession to kind of say because i shouldn't be able to walk because of all the notes of, of what's wrong with me but my family's chosen not to tell me that so right that's you could say is uh but you've always not had a limb like I'm saying, yeah so i i've obviously not having a limb, so you adapted from a very i've, adap age. I've adapted and it's been right not you i've i've probably been probably that individual that doesn't want to be on the outside looking in as right. i wanted to be you've had your own uh, i've had my probably uh, internal battle as well i've got right. to overcome this and adapt it because i want to be able to but do, do you feel the same things that we feel as older people losing a limb uh are, are, are the same struggles I yeah. think phys physically, yes. That's why. That's probably where but I can mentally, relate. Mentally, mentally. I mean, um, do you go through that depression? Do you go through that? Um, uh, woe is me. You know, life sucks. You know, life sucks. Yeah, and you, yeah. Like every, like every. I'm honest. That, I'm too. like everybody else. Yeah, woe is me. I, I I'll soon. I mean, not myself I know we all feel that way every now and again. I mean, I'm not going to sugarcoat it because you know it's just like, you know, why I, me? I, I, I will have those moments, but it, I think okay. I, I will remind myself as you you do inspire and motivate a lot of people right i don't i don't like that to be the case but obviously that's that's what it is what it is what it is but in terms of i'll write about the stuff or i'll talk about the things because obviously people have what was i did, I did during but the I pandemic know a lot of feel lost amputees just feel lost i mean i look at the you know the other sites and stuff like that and just i don't know it's just i don't know if it's i'm just wondering you know if you feel the same pain or distress or whatever that we feel because you have had a lifetime of it and we've only had a half a life of it and i think, the I, think the same? I think from a grieving perspective yes but in later okay. life because of well, if you're watching new, you wouldn't know this, but obviously I had a two, yeah, about two year hiatus from coaching. I went back to work full right. time. Uh, one right. of the reasons why I won't go back to nine to five. Uh, I worked in school for a little bit and I didn't take care of myself because I conformed to their ideology of 
I can't judge kids for going to school and having candy bars and the more I can because obviously that's that's my that's my opinion um I didn't but I conformed and I obviously ate garbage I didn't exercise and I would come home from that job nah I can't be asked to go to the gym and obviously I didn't get I got in a bad place but by obviously building myself back up those are core principles i wouldn't them it's like you've been active your entire life you have been healthy pretty much all your life to go over there is unacceptable so for me from from a mental perspective to go over there um and to feel some remorse uh is it reminds me because i've hit rock bottom when it's been mental health of it's not nice, but it's trying to probably showcase to people you can fix it sooner than that. You don't have to wait to rock bottom. You can, if if you know you've got aware that you've got a problem. I didn't. Right. My body probably was giving me warning signs that there was a, okay, you're not listening, let's do something. So I had a panic attack. I thought I was having a heart attack or stroke. Right. That woke me up. It's like, no, you need to take care of yourself, James, because this, 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 that environment's toxic anyway. But... I wasn't helping myself, so obviously take myself out of that. And so I answer your question in terms of the poor me. I have some, I have some bearing on that. So that's some control you have, as you can choose to pity yourself, or you can choose to do something about it. Because right. these are two different choices. Because the world's gonna go on regardless. Right. This is harsh, but okay. it's the truth. So you can ch- you can choose to right. obviously do something about it. So the pity me, I'll talk about it. I'll share it. Of okay, uh, the two instances I could think to come to mind is I uh, wrote a post during the pandemic of going up up into where I live and not being able to do it. I'd never been up there in my entire life, let alone drive up there either, and it is quite steep. So I wrote about it in terms of like giving yourself a little bit of, of a, a slack, slack, not necessarily getting out the whip. It's, it's no point f- flogging yourself for something that you may have never ever encountered in your life because it's not fair. Because it's, 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 it's there's, there's no tan, there's no tangible comparison. So why are you giving yourself a hard time? And then the other occasion, um, I laugh about this now. I didn't laugh about it last year when it happened. Uh, I fell over in the street. I tripped over, I think the curb or something like that, and obviously went down like a like a sack of potatoes. Colin's the first person I told, and he laughed. I was like, "Okay, let's put my ego aside," and this is a sharing moment for everybody in the amputee community because obviously, I got up as soon as possible. I didn't care if I was hurt. It was more my ego and um, right. My self-respect was tarnished a little bit because did anybody see it? And well, that's like if you have two legs and you fall, it's the same thing, the same old so, shit. So those, so those aspects, yeah. But I always try to remind myself of if you're going to pity yourself for a little bit, and this is actually a resource to do it, is you allow yourself maybe 10, no more than a minute. Yes. Okay, you've allowed, you've, okay, what do you want to really? do about it? That's the right. problem. What's the solution? So you right. can, whereas I probably don't, I'll probably do it a little bit quicker. It's like, okay, you feel sorry for yourself. Some people might, obviously the people that care about you might have some sympathy, but the rest of the world doesn't. Right. So, the, so, so exactly. do you want to fall behind everybody else? Right. I know the answer is no. So, Obviously, what we're yeah. going to do about it? What 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 do what plan do we need to put in place to resolve this to fix it? Right. And obviously, there you go. You got, you got some comments now, but uh, I spoke to Dawn anyway a few a couple of days ago. Of of that, it, it is is ultimately up to you. It's it's it's, yeah. it's hard. Do you want? I always say there's always somebody worse, more worse off than me. You know. Yes, we are allowed to have our little pity parties. We have to get over it and just move on because you can't get caught in that 
well depression because I just didn't know if your emotions were the same as ours because you've had a lifetime of it. It's and trying to, this here. this is something that I've obviously been taught. You need to take the emotion out of the circumstance. You right. do that. Yeah. You're able to rationalize and um how do I describe this? You can look at it. This is probably for the men because they do this a lot easier. Um, I'm not saying some women are not analytical. If you were able to, to rationalize and have all the analytics, so the numbers, and you take mo emotion out of it, mm -hmm. you can look at it a problem as, okay, how do I solve it? How do I fix it? If you let emotion take hold, and it's happened, and, and I've talked about this a little bit uh, recently, of... Mm -hmm here we go again i can't do it very well the tonality but that's a negative response right, that's a negative right. emotion taking hold of the circumstance because you are literally whacking in the vcr so i'm going to show people's age and <laughs> if you don't know what vcr is obviously go google it um and you hit the rewind button and then you play normally when you want to rewind something you want to go see the good bits but in this occasion you're replaying a negative emotion that's attached to said circumstance right if you can obviously pull those apart from a business perspective it's very easy because it's all numbers i take away the emotion how do i resolve this right and it's just a case of it's an, that's okay, important. That's the people that's are, important. Oh. Are no, these are people but those are those are impacting if i could take my emotion out of that that circumstances because if i pity myself i don't help yourself i don't help people watching i don't because i i hit the brakes oh poor me why is things not working for me that impacts you so that for me that 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 that's hard because that's like a punch in the face it's like okay james yeah your 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 emotion is in comparison this could be harsh to me could be like that small the impact to you is that it's huge because my if i was to use like financial gain if i've used your 500 dollars as an example you give me 500 dollars, i change your life mine is incrementally small in comparison because right. i've got the the return in the short term i've changed your yeah, life forever right so it's trying to to almost reverse engineer it to some extent to move you away from cost versus an investment because if you're going to invest in something you're looking for the return of investments so or roi so you're looking at the big one well if i put in 500 dollars don't think like this when i'm going to explain it what am I going to get in return? Right. So if you give me $500 and I t 10 times the amount, you'd be very happy. Right. But people need to look at the, the, the fitness in the same way as, okay, I want to lose 70 pounds. I could do it with James. I could do it with Weight Watchers. I could do it with Slimming World. What is the return and result that they can deliver me? Obviously, if you uh, if you go Slimming World and Weight Watchers, I bet you they can't answer that question. What are you going to get in return? So I could obviously say, for definite, if you're self if you're lacking in confidence, that will go up. Your self esteem will improve. Your overall, um, the way in which you look at yourself will drastically change. You won't hate your body. You will be you will want to flaunt it. Obviously, the guys, if you want to wash by abs, you're going to go to the beach. So that that the return of investment is that. However Can I get you... washboard abs? No. <laughs> <laughs> but it's trying to look at things in a, in a more futuristic sense versus obviously how much is going. To... I know we are obviously in a moving into a recession it doesn't help mindset because it's like well the cost of the bills are going up the cost of it but it's trying to look at it as even if, if my coaching is and i use 500 dollars as an example if mine is expensive by all means come and speak to me and see where 
we can because you've pretty much bought almost everything that I've ever brought. So you've you've worked with me. You've got my recipe book. You've got my meal right. plan. So you you you've pretty much got. We haven't got the kitchen sink, but you've almost done everything that I've ever created. Right. If coaching isn't for you, watching, get in touch and say. Obviously, I've mentioned the recipe book. That's not been publicized that much. Get in touch. If it's the meal planner, get in touch. Right. There, there, there's going to be some sort of but within your budget. Okay, ideally, I would say to everybody, if I could, coaching is the solution because you're able to have that person-to-person -person accountability. Right. And if you're not doing the work, obviously, I will let you know in terms of I won't, be, I won't say I won't be angry, but I would like to know why versus obviously something that's maybe lower not right. as accountable uh, accountable so i appreciate your question um um it's it's, Sorry, it's no, i'll, I'll, con it I'll contemplate i'll contemplate over it it's it's a deep one but in terms well, yeah of, it is deep i just it, was it, it probably you probably need to have like a round table or or have like a mastermind well, yeah. and then you could I mean, say, they don't well, teach you that stuff when you go to rehab when you lose a leg they teach you how to walk again they don't teach you the emotional side of that loss you well, know i don't think any i don't think any any anything prepared school doesn't prepare you for yeah but you know things that, that's a conversation that people need to have you know well i, I i'll give under uh, if rex sees this in the future rex yeah. has given me um the ross kubler that is obviously meant for terminally in patients originally but he said mm -hmm. he was given it when he lost his leg and i was like yeah, that'd be quite useful so if you haven't seen that let me know in the comments yeah. with ross kubler and i will tag you in in that yeah. post because it's in the group um so i need All to, right, go, to Bob, the, I need to go. go i need to go to the bathroom everybody okay. so i'm gonna sign off Ramona, thanks again for your time Thank you, Robert. so you have a wonderful day and i will speak to you soon all right bye